Hi guys. So we've done quite a few videos on talking about quantum hype in the past, but uh, there's yet another video that's talking about this topic. This one's called uh, Don't Fall for Quantum Hype by, I think you're a big fan of Sabine. Yeah, Sabine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's check it out. Quantum technology is presently amazingly popular on four key topics that I will go through in this video. That's quantum computing, the quantum internet, quantum metrology, and quantum simulations. In a quantum simulation, you try to understand a complicated system whose properties you cannot calculate by reproducing its behavior as good as you can with a different quantum system. However, quantum simulations are unlikely to have technological impact anytime soon, and what's worse, they have been oversold by some people in the community. Ooh. List of names, please. Yes. <laughs> well, quantum simulation, yeah, it's considered to be one of the most promising things because you don't need basically quantum computers necessarily to do it. That's that's basically the main advantage. That uh, if you want to do a quantum algorithm, you need a full quantum computer. But for quantum simulations, you could potentially build a simpler device and still mm -hmm. have the quantum effects. And so that's the most attractive thing. And uh, it's like a stepping stone to get to the quantum computer. I All think the so. talk about simulating wormholes is nonsense. These simulated wormholes have nothing in common with actual wormholes that, in case you missed it, we have good reason to think do not exist in the first place. There's always going to be that, but I think you can't really attack the whole... Wormhole? Yeah, <laughs> the, the whole concept of quantum simulations just because there's a couple of outlandish proposals of simulating wormholes. Well, I, I think you made a good, she made a good point about the newspapers, you know, always want to create the kind of hype, you know, but uh, yeah. we always, always misplaced ideas, you know, for the wormhole and for quantum simulation. You know. But newspapers always do that. I think you, I, I just expect them to do that. In fact, you know. Actually, actually I don't think it's the newspapers that are doing that. I think it's the people with the big phones. If they don't want it or if they don't like it, uh, the newspapers will be saying it. You know, I've written press releases and stuff. And I mean, even doing these YouTube videos, right? You, you can't make it boring. You have to, you know, have some catchy title and then talk it up a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to be totally ignored. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so that's why the newspapers are like that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. how many times have you seen someone reading Sakurai for fun? Yeah, like exactly. Like a random yes. person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if, if you want the truth, then you read Sakurai. And then <laughs> no. you just go and try just taking out like a section or chapter of Sakurai and then getting it into YouTube or the newspaper. Good, good luck with that. Get like zero views on that. <laughs> but I think no. you're jumping from one extreme to another extreme. I mean, there's yeah. no, nothing wrong having, making it a bit fun. <laughs> you know, Sakura is like pretty boring book. Could be made more fun. You know, you don't have to invent wormholes and <laughs> fake stuff yeah. just to make it a bit fun <laughs> and interesting. I think you compromise it. So there's the, the fun end of the scale and then there's the perfect truth end of the scale, right? Well, newspapers and YouTube, uh, you know, on this end of the scale. So that's why it ends up yeah, that way. But I the mean, way I yeah. see it is like not, it's not a linear scale. There is like two axes. Making it fake and false is one of the easiest way of making it fun. But there could be a legit way of making it fun without introducing mm. misinformation. No, it'll be a bit more boring than the, <laughs> than <laughs> Maybe the, less fun, the fully but... hyped version, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So are we saying there is something like Trump-like effect in this? Like quantum great again? That's how I always read newspapers that go, oh yeah, well, this person's hyping it up really great. I mean, <laughs> you obviously know it's a load of BS, right? Yeah. Well, I, I go one step further than you and I don't read news. I just read <laughs> sci-fi books. <laughs> so hyped that it actually becomes okay to overhype. You cannot transfer information faster than the speed of light with the quantum internet or with any other quantum effect. That I think you can transfer information faster, but the only thing is you haven't really communicated. Because if you make measurement on entangled state, it collapses almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that on the other side, um, it's a mixed state. You know, the person is, a, is, you know, is, is a joke. The person doesn't really know what is happening until you call him or her and says, okay, this is my measurement outcome. So in that case, I think information is transferred 
you know, almost instantaneously, but the communication hasn't yet happened. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, we can't see you in the video at all, by the way, but, but uh, <laughs> apart from that, <laughs> I think that people sort of use it synonymously. That's all. Yeah. You see this over and over again in the headlines that the quantum internet can supposedly beat the speed of light limit. It can not. That's just wrong. And no, this does not depend on your interpretation of quantum mechanics. It's wrong either way you look at it. No, this is not what Einstein meant with spooky action at a distance. It's really just wrong. Quantum mechanics does not allow you to send information faster than the speed of light. You're wrong, Abube. <laughs> <laughs> look at this image. I mean, yeah. I think she assumes that sending information and communicating is the same. That we have security protocols that do not require quantum technology, but are safe for quantum computers, nevertheless, called post-quantum cryptography, or in somewhat better terminology, quantum-safe cryptography. For this quantum-safe cryptography, is it the same thing that we talked about in the Bitcoin video? Yeah, sort of. The reason why it's not used right now mm -hmm. is there are really no standards yet okay. for quantum safe cryptography. Yeah. <clears throat> it's much less efficient. Like the keys are very large yeah. and inconvenient to use. As Sabine said, there is really no big quantum computers to thread the current ciphers anyway. Yeah. So, but sort of exists already. But does that rely on the current state of the quantum computer? Like, because the current state, the quantum computer is not powerful enough now so it can't break this new type of cryptography or it's like designing such a way so that even though you have like a quantum computer, for example, have 10 million qubits that still can... St it. Still couldn't. Okay. Because there is no known quantum algorithm Okay. That yeah. could break those kind of ciphers efficiently. It is it there is some speed up, but it's insignificant. Okay. It's like quadratic or something. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But it's just still no known, right? Like yeah. I'm, I guess a lot of these things are you, you can never prove security, right? You you can. It's just uh, people don't really search for but it's it's a very difficult task. Like you mm -hmm. would have to find a Turing machine for that and prove that this Turing machine cannot do it. So usually it's just first come, first serve, with the best known algorithm is. And this update is already underway. For some reason, the people who work on quantum things don't like to draw attention to that. Personally, I think quantum metrology is the most promising part of the quantum technology package. I made a video especially about quantum metrology. Wow! So many ads. Do we have any quantum metrology projects right now? Um, she says it's the most promising. I mean, it's actually a pretty general concept that, you know, you can apply to so many situations. That the usual story is something like, okay, you use some quantum state that has, like, less noise than you would otherwise. Mm -hmm. And then you get, you know, some benefit from that. So, like, noon states, squeeze states, these are all, you know, basically quantum metrology type things. You need to be able to bring a large number of qubits into controllable quantum states. And that's really, really difficult. To me, the situation for quantum computing today looks similar to the situation for nuclear fusion 50 years ago. The problem was just to make the technology large and still efficient enough to actually be useful. And as you all know, that's still the problem today. Although there's that kid that made a fusion reactor, like in his garage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like there's, you, you can actually get fusion to, to work. It, it's just that you can't get more energy out than you uh, put yeah. into it. I'm positive that we will eventually use both nuclear fusion and quantum computing in everyday life. But keep in mind that technology enthusiasts tend to be overly optimistic in their predictions for how long it will take for technology to become useful. Hmm, I, I quite like Sabine now because she seems actually quite realistic yeah, in comparison very. to 
a lot of the hype that's actually out there. Well, hence the title, I suppose. Yeah, she has a charming sweater also. <laughs> <laughs> I'm highlighting the wormhole myth because, to my shock, I saw it appear in a White House report. So quantum simulations are cool for the most part, but if someone starts babbling about wormholes, that is not serious science. I hope this quick summary helps you to make sense of all the quantum stuff in the headlines. This video was sponsored by Brilliant, which is a website. Oh, oh okay. boy, yes. Final ad, yes. So many ads in this. Wow. Who are we sponsored by? Um, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Waiting for sponsors right now. Yeah. We provide truly unbiased opinions. No commercial motivation. Well, you know, I think a lot of it was pretty accurate. The the facts in the video were pretty accurate. You know, it's fair enough that there is quite a lot of hype in in the quantum world. I agree. Agree? Agree with Sabine? I agree with Sabine. Yeah? Sabine, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> she does make some point. I like that form. We can, we should, one day we should do something like that. Like a uh, short <laughs> video, we yeah. made some points. Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> we can't be and making some, points. Some like, uh, fancy. What does Chow think? <laughs> Chow will do. Everybody something. wants to hear about our future. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but also, can I feel like she was many generalizations in this video? This is probably the most wholesome on the video so far. Wholesome? Yeah. I guess in comparison to yeah. whatever we've done so far, yeah. which, were, which were pretty <laughs> bad, right? Is it possible for us to do a collaboration with Sabine in the future? Yeah. Oh, because um, yeah. I don't mean like publish paper together, but to do YouTube videos. <laughs> oh, YouTube videos. Oh, no, no, no. No, we're too insignificant for Sabine. <laughs> well, actually, it's, it's pretty favorable. So, okay. Congratulations so, on great video, Sabine. <laughs> <laughs> so should we wrap it up there? Thank you for watching. And if you liked the video, then please don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time. Bye, Sabine. <laughs>